There we go. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hopefully you're seeing us. Our uh, phone is awful dark, so I'm not really sure if it's going to be. I'm waiting to see what it looks like on here. We may start over with better lighting. So as y'all come on, say hey. Hey. No, I'm already here. Oh, the I'm lighting is good. It looks good. It's just, just on it our It looks phone. dark on ours because it's content. Uh, <laughs> contemplating it's not contemplating it's <laughs> it's uh changing for the light reflection in it so something yeah but i just saw it so <laughs> it's all good it's all good so we're gonna give y'all a second but while we're doing that we'll tell you about our day what did you do today i worked um juggling lots of balls in the air with different things yeah what did you do today it worked. It helped me juggle all those same ones. Some. <laughs> Some I sat there and shopped. Didn't do a whole lot because I didn't and She was waiting for me to, to give her something. I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know. Let me get some of these other stuff done and then I never I've get around to it. I've been very busy lately. It's very frustrating. Frustrating? <laughs> no more crocheting at no the No more crocheting. None. It is beautiful. It is not. <laughs> not so much. No? No. You don't like your new position? I do, but I don't. I'd kind of really like not. to go back to half and half. Yeah, it's really a new position. You still kind of... It's not a new position. It is. It's we've, just... We've, folded, we've filled it out way past where it was. So, no, yeah, it's, I would say it's, it's a different... It's big. <laughs> it's big. Okay, yeah. so today... Oh, are you going to introduce us? Yep. Is that your job? I guess so. <laughs> we got a lower light over here, and I really want to raise it up so my glasses don't reflect this light so much, but uh, we'll see. Well, anybody, hi, everyone. Uh, another episode of What Really Matters. We kind of missed Tuesday because, well, we, glasses off. we were doing... We're not reading anything today. We were doing uh, well, more work and got home really late on... Uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, which is our normal night. So we promise to try and but make next, that happen more no, and more. No, the, we are two weeks, gonna miss the some. next two weeks are going to be Thursday nights because well, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve right. are Tuesdays. Yeah. So, I mean, if we, we may take the weeks off. I don't know. But no, did, I'm trying to not try. miss anymore because we want this to be our priority for us. Right. So when you come on here, say hello. Yep. Um, and we thank you guys because a few of you said, hey, where are you on Tuesday? And we're like, oh, yeah. Got several messages That's that good. said, why That's are good you to not know on? That, you know, some adoring fans are out there <laughs> that actually listen to what we have some to say. Some good friends. Yeah. yeah. So did you already introduce us? I just told him it was what, what really, really matters. matters. Okay. This is my beautiful wife, Michelle. I'm Todd. That's hot toddy. Hot toddy. And that back there is our Christmas tree. That is my Christmas tree, and <laughs> it is gorgeous. It gets whiter and whiter. It's whiter than both of us put together down here well, as it goes out. So yeah, you just okay. can't see it on camera. <laughs> it's big. Okay, so, so tonight's topic... We're going to talk about ourselves. We're going <laughs> to... Like that's like not, that's what we not ever do. new. But right. I mean, we're going to tell the story of, you know, like how we got together because it's a little bit different and most people don't really know that, um, you know, the story when we met and I titled this Atheist Plus Christian Equals True Love because... That was an atheist, and I Ex was a Christian. Atheist. I said was. Yeah, no, I just mean the title. It should have said, you know. Well, but at the time, talk about you were an atheist sense, when I yeah. fell in love with you. That's yeah. why it does. No, it makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, we're going to talk about yoking. You know, his <laughs> correcting me is a bit much, I say. I know, I'm really in a... Just, You're just all day today, uh, tonight. Me. It is. I'm, I'm just... I don't think we're going to make it through. I just <laughs> had it. Uh, Anywho, so let's just get to talking. I don't know. I know that people are going to come on. Maybe they're going to miss. Maybe they can come back and watch again later. I don't know. Um, I am trying well, I know, to. Um, I don't know. We could, uh, we could probably have feedback or something happening. Yeah. Because <laughs> she was testing the the. I was trying to do iPad. something different and that came on. So let's start talking. Well, uh, obviously, we come from completely different backgrounds, and we didn't completely. know each other completely before. You know, obviously, there how did we meet? Through a mutual friend <laughs> who said, "Hey, I think you might want to get to know this person." 
Mm-hmm. This one. Uh, and I was like, oh, really? And uh, she said, yeah, why don't you come to an event? And they set up an event. What was that event? Uh, we went to the lake for Labor Day. Yeah. Because yeah. she gave him a picture of me, and he's like, I like how she looks, but she has a kid, and that's over. I was getting to so, that. Really. Yeah, she had a kid, so done. I'm like, nah, nah. So for a couple of weeks, Not I kept speak saying. to her. How old was I at the time? 27, 20. Eight? No. Twenty-six. I was twenty-two. Anyway, that's Anyways, not what's important. That's how you, well, it's important in the sense so, that I was. We were still young, but not too young. Twenty-seven ish. Okay, we're gonna give y'all a little background of what was going on and how we got together, and how do you think you know an atheist and a Christian could make it work and all that kind of stuff. Because I'm here to tell you that it's probably not something that's going to be able to work long term. So, growing up, you were, how, what, tell us a little, just a little bit about you. I was growing up, uh, uh, my mother and father were uniquely different. My father was an atheist, hardcore in the sense that he was not a political atheist, he was just a personal atheist. He just chose not to believe, and if you felt like you wanted to believe in whatever, he just felt like that's, if that's a crutch that you need, fine. And so he wasn't in your face like the things we have going on now where he wants to rip down Christian. Right. So your mom scenes was... Scenes or anything else. And my mother was a Methodist, um, and because she didn't have access to the church very often because my father didn't go, she brought us kids. We were raised in the church when we were real little. Uh, Which is funny and we, and My dad was in the Army, and uh, back then, let's see, uh, I remember mostly when he was uh, a major. Back to that time was when I was going to... <laughs> being forced to go to Sunday school and whatnot. So as a teenager... Your mom said, you get to make a choice. Well, you know, but I was just pointing out that we were on military base, so there was a base, a routine, but it was still fairly similar. She went to a church, and then finally we got to where we weren't living on base, and we were in Manassas, Virginia, and we uh, went to uh, a Methodist church. I wish I could remember the name of it. The name of the, the pastor's name was Red. Obviously, he had red hair, and I don't remember his real name, but... Uh, and, and I, he'd been over to the house a few times, and he was a nice enough guy, and I went to church with her. And then finally I was like, I don't really see the point here. Um, we're just kind of going through the motions here. So um, I guess she just got tired uh, of battling all the time said, you know what, you make your choice. So I was probably she about 15 kids. years old, yeah. make my choice. That was a bad idea. Um, obviously you can't, you, well, you mean, can drag your kid you kicking and streaming, decisions. but right. 15 is not old enough for you to be able to say so what was you your choice, that choice what was your choice well my choice was you know and I, I never really even thought about it you know but subconsciously you can't help not to you know dad's not going to church each week i never sat there and asked my dad hey you going to church with us i already knew the answer and he wasn't mean about it he was just sitting at the house you know doing whatever he does and we would go off and come back and there he is still sitting there doing what he was doing uh no condemnation or anything just you know, all right, nice. So y'all. you made a choice. You know, he'll like, not go to he'll church. look at us and go, y'all feel better now? <laughs> so y'all, you made a choice not to go to church. Uh, yeah. When did you decide that you were really going to be an atheist well, and not go to church? Because well, that's where we're going to get to. Yeah. Because we got to talk about when we met and right, things. Right, we're getting there. Well, it gives that good background. You do a lot of talking. Well, it's very interesting stuff. Huh. Uh, when I Probably about, you know, 13, I started to kind of rebel a little bit. 14, I was like, I don't know why we're doing all this. And 15, I finally got freedom. And I was like, you know, um, I, and, I, and I kind of told everybody in school, they're like, oh, wow, you know, we, we're going to go do this or that at the church. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. If that's what you guys need, that's the crutch that you need. Those are the kind of things I did pick up because I kind of really kind of felt like that's fine. If you guys are weak and you have to have crutches like that, then, right. you know, prop yourself up. More, you know, more kudos to you, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a subversive way of saying I'm better than you are, but <laughs> that hasn't changed. <laughs> that hasn't any. changed. So, so they would. You know, so anyway, so I decided. You know, I used to have a theory. I wanted to make sure I plugged in here because I remember sitting, and during that 15, 16 year old time, was very big. Uh, we would go out at night and hang out. Me and my friends. Sometimes it was guys. Sometimes it was guys and girls that were just hanging out. Just were friends. We're not boyfriend and girlfriend, just friends that happened to be a group that we hung out with. And uh, a big thing to do sometimes, we didn't have anything to do. We didn't have video games or any other stuff to do. 
And after we kind of got done, at the end of the day, we would go out to a park that was in the middle of some townhomes around by my house, and we would go swinging and just talk, you know, ponder life's wonderments. And the cop topic would almost always come up, hey, Todd, what do you think about this? Well, if you don't believe in, in God, then what do you believe? And I used to explain to him, you know, hey, well, this is how I see things. And I gave them the, my tenets, so to speak. Uh, tenets uh, of his non-faith. Right, tenets of my non-faith. And told them, you know, hey, I, you know, this is how I see it. But one of the main ones that used to blow their minds was they're like, well, I don't understand how you can think that way. And I said, well, it's because you perceive from a false notion, quote unquote. And uh, they're like, well, what does that mean? I said, well, you're perceiving from your preconceived uh, Christian based notion. And I said, well, what does that mean? I said, well, you don't understand. We could be, and thinking in, a kind of a pseudo intellectual pseudo um, cosmological point of view because remember for me it was about cosmology I don't mean cosmetology I mean cosmology meaning the the order of things in the universe uh, and that would I used to tell them well you have to first contemplate the fact that that we're alive but we don't exist and I said as soon as you can understand that concept you can start to understand where I'm coming from most people can never understand that concept. To this day, I understand that concept. In fact, I was reading an article just the other day in quantum, about uh, quantum sciences that actually has a theory that is almost exactly that based on some new findings that they had that has to do with time-space relativity that may blow the door open on our, our understanding of our actual timed universe. That's not what so our anyway, topic is. So that's so kind of, but that little, that, little, that little diatribe is exactly the kind of stuff that I filled them full with. And people used to call me uh, an intellectual BSer. That, that hasn't changed much hot either. air. Always, <laughs> always. So anyway, with so that, you chose that's, to the, be, that's the load I carried around on top of me, but it was... But it was just because you didn't really want to have to believe in anything. I didn't want anyone and telling me to what to, to think church. or how to think right. or limit my possibilities. Right. Um, that I'm At the time, you would almost think that I was... Um, uh, uh, very liberal in my approach to thought, and I was. Um, and But the idea was to be open to these things, whereas I felt like Christians were very shut off in the way that they saw things. But I do remember the day when I finally was talking to somebody, some bad times had hit or some difficult emotional times had hit. Uh, sometimes it had to do with moving or not losing for friends you, or for whatever. Somebody else. No, for me, not. Okay, you had bad I, emotional. Times. When I had to move, it was very emotional to you me that because part I, get, yeah. I totally hated it. We moved every two or three right. years. Right. Four years was the most I ever lived in any spot. So I hey, learned. Kristen's I learned. On. Hey, Kristen. Hey. I mean, there's a lot more people. But yeah, she talked I, to I me. can't see it because I took yeah. these off. I know that's fine. She said hi. So I had a very sad attitude. Was you know, don't make friends because they're all you're going to do is get hurt. So I right. had. I had friends, loose friends. I had a couple, of, and finally I made a couple of good friends, and I was moving. Very upset by that. But the idea was keep your emotions, keep all of that very close guarded. You don't let that out to anybody, because if you do, they're just going to pull your heart out. And they're not doing it. I am. I'm leaving with my parents because we're moving. So what are you going to do? You can't fight that. So anyway, those are the kind of bags that I had going on with me. But I do remember the day when I was doing something and I actually started to ponder, obviously it, the effect goes both ways. I'm affecting them, I'm watching their reactions and I'm pondered by them. But they also spoke back to me about their Christian faiths and we pondered all kinds of different things. And uh, I just wanted to know, I said, you know what, if there was ever a way, and I remember saying this and they just kind of looked at me like, well, duh. My question was, you know, sometimes it's just so difficult um, if there was actually uh, a book of life, a rule book that you could read that would just tell you how things are, I'd just follow it, you know, because it'd just be easier because there's so many things you don't and know. you know what? There is one of those <laughs> books. And they're just looking at me like, this is fairly obvious, but do you we know what that is? supposed to be talking about us. I am. It's moving forward. And now, so that's where we were. So what that means was, she's trying to get me to say was, during that time, I then moved on in... To the time period you wanted me to say, which was later on, uh, I was still uh, an atheist when I went to college. But when I when I was there, I was intrigued by Christianity, and uh, I actually went into a program in my um, master's program mm -hmm. 
uh, where I actually chose to be part of a liturgical architectural group, which means church, church. architecture group. Designing churches while he's an and atheist. So I was intrigued by that and uh, because I felt like those were some of the most beautiful structures as well as intriguing. So the, 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 du, you know, the, the duplexity of it all, I guess, uh, kind of made this... Uh, so he had a Methodist interesting mom situation for me. Yep. And an atheist dad. Yep. And his mom gave him a choice as a teenager, and of course he chose not to go to church. Yeah. Because that's I kind mean, of a default. You have a choice. Mm, and then he said, normal. you know, why not? I'm just going to be an atheist. When I met him, I was a Christian. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say I was living a great Christian <laughs> life because I was doing stuff I probably wasn't supposed to be doing. But um, I was 22, and I did have a daughter. I was right. that was five. So she, well, she was four when I met. Let's you. just say there had been events. So you know, I was a teen pregnancy. My parents were ministers in the church, and you know all this kind of stuff. So I was raised in the church and all that. Needless to say, some eyebrows were raised. So when I met him, though, and you know he, so <laughs> the whole story is where we're supposed to start at. Uh -huh. I know he gave a long uh, history of himself, <laughs> which well, I is wanted to... no shock. <laughs> Oh, my word. Anyway, so... I got more. The whole... Yeah, we know. So, what I was trying to get was the fact that um, when we met, you know, you didn't oh, want to have anything... Yeah. yeah, we're talking about us, not okay. just you. When we met, you really didn't want to go out with me. No. Because I had a kid. I had a kid. And that I'm was... I'm single. Why would you... Right. Start and off so instant you, family. You said you, no. So, my know. friend decided, hey, let's just... Uh, so she tricked us both into meeting up at the lake for Pretty Labor much, Day yeah. um, with, you know, some other friends and right. stuff. And so we met, and we didn't really think very highly of each other <laughs> at all that day. Um, that but was funny. He called, and so we went out. The the really the funny thing is he said all kinds of weird dumb things in my mind. I was a bit like, socially retarded. Told me that he was sixty four years old and you know I I don't know all kinds of, of weird stuff. So we get to know each so other. I felt that old. So he was. <laughs> no, you said you were sixty four. I well, said how old are you? In the time space continuum, you don't know. Anyway, the whole thing was. <laughs> I'm discovering that he's an atheist, okay? And I'm a Christian. Yeah, and I what? and I thought it was odd. So we do we he does call me we go well, technically I called him. And then um he asked me out. We go out and so we're talking and we're getting to know each other and I realize this guy's an atheist. I'm not sure I can date an atheist, you know, because I'm a Christian. How's that gonna work? And then probably should have gone with that. What? Probably should have gone with that. Most people probably should with, go with yes, that. Yes, and that's what we get to. Not that you should have. No. We'll explain why. So, but there are, the odds so are, go with, we, your, go with that Holy Ghost speaking. Don't get well, unequally Well, that's what yoked. I was going to get to is <laughs> I knew not to get involved with someone who didn't believe the way I believed. Um, you know, you always want to minister and reach out and witness, but not dating somebody who's not on the same page you are. That's pretty big. Um, this was pretty big. And yet, I knew from the time I met him, I was going to marry him. And I was just like... She wasn't like, afraid to tell even me I that, was just okay? like, oh my, oh my, okay, God, I'm praying, okay? Who are you? I, I was praying, God, <laughs> please, oh, God. please tell me how this is going to work. How does a Christian and a atheist, because I don't think that's going to make a good marriage, I'm just saying... Go with that. Go with that. So that's not what I went with. Um, I dated him. And, uh, but you had you know, rules. I, I, did have, I did have rules. I did have rules. You have to go to church with me. Right. Um, and to, so. Had to soothe that burning sinful sensation that you had. Yes. Well, we're going to talk about some of the things <laughs> because what we like to do is what really matters is share the things that we did Wrong right and, right. and wrong. Yeah, yeah. So when we started dating, it didn't take long. I knew, I knew that I wanted to marry him from the get. I knew I was going to marry him. I mean, it was just something in my spirit God had given to me. And so I was like, well, hey, if I'm going to marry him, I can live with him, right? So he can just live with me. It's called justification. As long as he goes to church. Now, I'm telling y'all, I wasn't a great Christian. I didn't say I was a great Ooh, Christian. You young and dumb. I was young Everybody's and I was just doing, making my own little, you know... 
rules, which is seems to be what people do all the time now. <laughs> right. But back then, it was really frowned upon. We've learned not to do that. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, so we start dating. Yeah. He moves in. And there's going to be several layers of the things that we've done wrong coming up right now. Yeah, it is. One is he moved in moved and we in. were not married. And you and your daughter. And I had a daughter. Mm -hmm. And I would highly recommend to anyone who's single that, that has children, um, even though I knew I was going to marry him until there were things worked out and that relationship had gotten there. You know, maybe you shouldn't bring home everybody you date. Not that I dated a whole bunch of people. Yeah, or we'll talk home about to how her. to date another time. But um, to to your kids, don't they shouldn't be exposed. They're going to expect this is going to be their next, um, you know, dad, mom, precedent. step, whatever. And it just kind of it just doesn't set well with your kids. Your kids don't learn a whole. It will lot undermine of good. every Christian thing you um, ever told your now kid. The, the, well. <laughs> Yes, because then Mommy can lie. <laughs> when you have teenagers and they're like, wow, mom, you got pregnant as a teenager Eventually and they figure you lived with dad. They can you know. do math. <laughs> right. So, I mean, yeah, because even if you lie, they're going to figure that out. So now you're lying to your kids. So all uh, of this, you know, I'm just saying. But so when we met, I was just like, you know, and, and I had no problem telling him I'm going to marry you. <laughs> no, and, she didn't uh, have a problem. Like, with that. And I was like, whoa there. <laughs> and he was like. Back up the car. She scared me so bad. I said, not. I think we ought to back off for a while. No, that yeah. wasn't till later. Because I had proposed. You said yes. It, it was a great romance. It was very <laughs> short. I was like, I know I'm going to marry him, so I'm going to propose. Because why am I living with somebody if I'm not going to marry him? Because that was big for me. So I proposed. And he's like, yeah. And then... We're walking well, with... I thought it was wait, wait, because, wait, 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 you know, wait, no, it's no. It's the wrong way to do it, so we that was cool. We are walking. We are riding... Uh, Crystal's riding her bike. Uh -huh. We are teaching my daughter yeah. to ride her bike at yeah. four years old. And he's got her by the neck. This is the way he taught all the kids how to ride their bikes. So he's got her with the neck, and he's walking with her. And he turns and looks at me and says, um, I'm breaking off our engagement. We're not getting married. <laughs> While we're walking with my daughter. So what are you going to do about it? While what do, yeah, like I can't exactly <laughs> explode all over anyway. him with her there. Anyway, why are you trying to get off that topic? Because it makes things. me look bad. I want to oh. move on. So he goes to church a few times. Every time. Uh -huh. Because that was the rule. And uh, one of the times... Oh, did I go to a church, too? It was at Assemblies of God Church. It but was we a, went and... Um, a great East there Texas was church. There was our pastor, Clyde Drake. Woo! Yeah. I hope that doesn't He's hurt still, his prospects. He is still out there <laughs> just is. preaching up a storm on occasion. Love him dearly. So anyway, we go to church may and one... May or may not claim me. <laughs> one Sunday night... No, he loves the story. Clyde will tell the story every time. Uh, one Sunday night, we're there. We're in church. He's holding my hand. Well, no, you weren't holding my hand then. No. And he says... He gives the altar call, and Todd's like wanting to come down, but he didn't. And I've got my eyes closed because, you know, they tell you, bow your head, close your eyes, you can't look around, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I was obeying. How I was not have looking I been around. Going to church at this time? Uh, about three months. Yeah. So finally, Clyde's like, and if you're too scared to come down here to do it, then just grab the your neighbor's hand and come down. So the next thing I know, he's grabbed my hand, and we are running down to the front very fast. And I was just like, whoa, okay, so I'm kind of impressed. But part of what I wanted to say, too, it was always so funny because when we were um, talking, you would always say things like, this is a coincidence. And I'd be like, no, that was God. And you would, so later on, he would come around and say, don't be so gullible uh, <laughs> or something of that nature. Yeah, but later on, you would say yeah. to me things like, Okay, I see how this is. It got so another coincidence right. would come up, and he would be like, "Oh yeah, okay, I'm starting to see. I'm starting to see how God works. I'm starting to see how this is. I'm starting to listen to you, and and understand and hear. Plus, with going to church, you were very. Um, I set a natural eye towards it because that's all I knew to do. It wasn't much till much later, as we all probably can attest." 
that you actually get the eyes that see and ears that hear. That takes a while, but I was at least putting my eyes towards wanting to see the things of the faith. And that's the first step. Right. I mean, whenever someone's contemplating uh, your faith, all you're wanting to speak to is what they what would motivate that person to use their eyes and ears to look into the faith. Don't expect them to have eyes that see and ears that hear. They're not. They're not. They're not Christians yet. Right. That's something that's held right. for the saints. The saints do. You, know, you got to have that. But and, and they could have that. I'm not saying they won't, but most people won't because they don't know how to use that part. That's not a gift that's been granted yet. So uh, as they're coming towards uh, Christianity, um, it's a very delicate time. It's a very fearful time for the person because let's face it. I dug my heels in when she, we first started doing this thing. I was like, don't expect a whole lot from me because I'm I very dedic- tightly wound very and tightly there's a wound, lot of unwinding that needs to take place. The most important thing <laughs> to know was this a individual who happens to have come from an atheist background has dedicated their entire life to this mm-hmm. faith, if you will. Of, of it takes a lot of faith to, to be an atheist. It does. It takes more faith to be an atheist than it does ever to be a Christian. Um, in the sense that you've got to overlook a lot of things that shouldn't be overlooked. And so therefore it's kind of foolish faith. But uh, there's a positive faith that you do with the Lord. So, But when they're coming to you, you're talking about a person's integrity, their right. dignity. Yeah. Uh, everything they've ever thought, every word they've ever uttered. They're going to have to go before the Lord in front of everybody in a church um, and denounce everything in their life. It's not a small deal. It is a huge deal. And most people might not see that. So when you see someone having come to the Lord, especially the further away they were, now some people are so far away that they're actually almost a Christian because they can flip like that. This ain't what I'm talking about. This is truly the opposite side of the whole thing. Uh, with serious doubt. But you were closer than you think because it really didn't take you that long once you were around. You know, once you were exposed to... Because there there was a difference. Well, I'm going to tell them what triggered that. You would mentioned for me to talk about it. When I was a teenager and whatnot, I started to realize things that started to make me think, all right, if there's a God. I used to do the if there's a God thing quite a bit uh, as a challenge, you know? And they always... And the pastor would always say, you know, in a, in a positive way in church, right. he'll say, challenge God to do this. Well, I was negatively challenging God, kind of mocking it uh, back then, because that's what I knew. Um, and I was like, yeah, you know, if, if there's a God, then, you know, and I would be, again, looking to put eyes to it. This is before we met. Before, way before. This is back when I was a teenager. You know, when I was... When, you know, I, when, the, when, when the witch I, was involved and you could yeah. feel evil spirits? And so I, I <laughs> ran across people in my life that I knew felt different and they did different things and they spoke and did different things and i realized that there were a couple of key people one of which was a young girl that proclaimed to be a witch i was like well if i can be an atheist you can be a witch you can be a christian whatever um but i remember having gone over and i was interested in this person they were intriguing um not only like as a girlfriend type thing but also just as a unique person uh and having gone to their house a few times and i had a paper out and they were at the other end I would have to do it after school. So I'd be walking home sometimes uh, from that house. And I, I could almost always, every time, whenever I left that house, feel a presence upon me as I was walking home. Undeniable. Back then we walked, okay? I rode bikes and we walked. So I would walk a couple of miles home. No big deal back then. So I had a, number, a little bit of time in the dark. And so all of a sudden I started paying attention to, there's a presence and I don't like the way it feels, and I feel like it, if I allowed it in, I would regret it. So that got me to thinking, and I have also had other experiences like that as well, and as well as I've had a recurring dreams when I was a young child of various evil events, animals, and things that have happened in my life. Uh, owls are terrible, by the way. Uh, so are mirrors. They're <laughs> awful. Owls sure, are mirrors. Yeah. Don't, anyway. Don't. That's just him. <laughs> <laughs> just him. Uh, so I realized that that, def- that defined itself to me as what I recognized as the rest of the world, especially Christianity, would identify as evil. 
Right. So if there's so therefore, an evil, there's a... I had to ju juxtapose my belief with the anti-belief, which is if I believe there is no God, uh, and therefore no goodness... There, right, no and, spiritual And yet beings. I define that there's badness, right. evil, right. Uh, then that gives cre creed to the fact that there may be a balancing force to that because right. all things in my belief factors had balance to them in some way or another. Right. Uh, including the universal realm and universe, infinite universes. But so with that, I started to contemplate. That's, so not knowing that if someone were to tap into that, having spoken with me, right. they could have very well have used that and rapidly gotten me. Uh, but it yeah, took but me years to unravel well, this myself. The reason why I was trying to, t I wanted so to tell the go. story <laughs> is, well, um, because we are two very different people that, that have, I believe God intended for us to be together. And, um, and I do believe that God has, you know, people, specific people that he has appointed, so to speak, for, for you as a spouse. Now, I was a pregnant teenager. I married the father. It was not a great relationship, and we won't go into that. Um, so I yep. left. Yep. And... Um, did not did not want to stay in that, so I left and uh, met him. And I was just and I dated a couple of people between that relationship, between the marriage and meeting him. But I was not there Losers. was nothing. Yeah, well, and so but I but when I so when I met him and I knew I was going to marry him, I knew I was going to marry him before I knew he was an atheist. Okay, I mean like God just showed that to me. And I was so confused. And then he starts telling me all these things about, uh, because he's going to church now. Um, he actually knew some of the Bible. Um, and his dad, who's an atheist, knew lots of the Bible, which just blew my mind. But he started telling me about the things when he was a kid with the evil spirits and the mm -hmm. uh, different things. And She's things that happened at church, <laughs> yes. And things that happened at a church that he did go to that probably wasn't necessarily the right thing, you know, locking kids in um, and telling them they're not leaving till they hear the salvation story is probably Bad not the way to reach yeah. a teenager. So that yeah. turned him off. Oh, and I yes, get that. I dug Cause in Cause there's, deep. there's a good, there's good ways and, and bad ways to reach out. So mm -hmm. locking kids in is probably not a good one. Um, but then, you know, he starts talking about the dreams, but then he goes to college and he just, has this grand desire to design churches. And then we meet and he's like... Mind you, I hadn't pulled the trigger on Christianity yet. I just was No, but that's my it. point. <laughs> so it's like God has had his hand on his life from the beginning, which is what God's word says. It does. It does. You know, he's formed him in his mother's womb and he knew him before. You know what I mean? He knitted him up. I've got all the verses all in my head right now, and they're all scrambled together, so none of those are the same verse. They're like three different verses. Yes, yes. So, uh, so God did know that, but he also knew with all my mistakes that all of the garbage that I was doing, that um, so. that I needed somebody like this to, you know, to, to be there. So when I met... It was just we really, just sinned differently. It was just <laughs> it was just weird. But the so here's the funny thing. So you know he moves in, and I have a five year old daughter. Again, we don't recommend any of what we did. None of this should be going on in your life. Fortunately, um, I was of the mindset. Yes. Fortunately, I was of the mindset by then that if I am going to do this, if I am going to date her, it's dating. Uh, it is. It is instant family in the sense well, that... Well, yeah, because I had a kid. It, I'm not looking at the child at the time and thinking, oh, well, you're just extra. I'm, at, I'm all in for this, but right. you're extra. No, this was... No, if was... I'm doing this, I dedicated... Because just because you happen to come... I might have made a bunch of dumb mistakes and done a lot of dumb things... We but all do. Honor and integrity were still were a big but part. But your mom was also one of who that I was, was. Your mom was very, very, very strong in making sure that anybody that the family brought in would um, be family and treated as such. Right. So that, that was so never an issue that. with me. It was never right. an issue with the well, with so my what mother I'm or trying family. to let me yeah, keep you. going. So he moves in. Yep. Um, we start going to church. Well, I was already going to church. 
living my, living my sinful life and going on church on Sunday mornings. And, I got and saved. then he moves in, and then in October he got saved. And then I lost my job, and so I was kind of like forced into you know letting him support me. And I was a single mom, and I had it was a trick. Yeah. Right. Trapped me. So, uh, but our my lease in this apartment was up in this January. So, and, and during all this time, we've gone through a couple of things that we're not going to go into because he was going to make some stupid decisions that I said, no, you're not going to make those decisions. And so, just dumb stuff. And then, you know, I had proposed and he said yes. Then he broke up. And then, <laughs> and then it comes time and it's like, I can't do this anymore. And the reason why I couldn't do this anymore was because I was a Christian. I was responsible for myself. But once he got saved, I'm responsible for what was going to happen to him. And if I was living with him out of wedlock and in sin, then I was responsible for him living in sin. And I just didn't want to do that. I was just not capable anymore. I was done with it. So I told him, I said, our... our uh, yeah. Our my lease is up in January. If I have to, I'll just move back home or find something else to do. My parents would have probably just said, "Nope, not happening." Might have, but um, I was just going to do something because I didn't want to be responsible for that any longer. Because you know, I mean, we are responsible for all of the people essentially we come in contact with, but especially mm -hmm. those that we love and that we've planted seeds. And he's a baby Christian, and I can't encourage him to stay living out of wedlock and I wasn't being ugly. It's like, I'll still date you. We can still try to have this relationship. I just can't, we just can't do this because all of this is living in sin. And, um, and it wasn't really, you know, I wasn't being a martyr. I wasn't no, being, you were just adjusting I just according was, to your faith. I was growing Our spiritually and so was he. And because we were growing spiritually, I couldn't be responsible for that. Plus, I have a five-year-old daughter, and if you mm -hmm. can't commit to marrying me, then I probably don't need you, you know, affecting myself and my daughter right. either. It so, wasn't easy for you to do. No. It was a huge deal, but you are willing to do what's right, and you proved the fact that if you if you actually follow now, this is in a what you're supposed to do, month, this is what you do. Six-month time frame from the time we met, September 2nd, March 31st is when we got married. But here's how he proposed. So we'll go into this part real quick because this I is just hilarious. I just come out smelling really bad in this so, whole story. I didn't tell all the bad stuff. I know. I'm telling There's the a lot funny worse, stuff. but I still look bad. I'm telling the funny <laughs> stuff. So the funny stuff is um, he calls his mom on a Saturday. We're at home, and he calls his mom and says... That's rare. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> I never used to call her. Never. And so he calls Not his mom. Not because there's a problem. I just and he says, hey, mom, what are you doing the last Saturday in, um, in March? Can you come down? She goes, well, that's my birthday. And he goes, I know. That's why we planned it. And he goes, oh, I'm telling the story wrong. So sure he calls his mom and he says, mom, what are you doing the last Saturday in March? And she said, well, nothing. Why? And she, he goes, well, because Michelle and I are getting married. That was my proposal. That was it. <laughs> Michelle and I are getting married. There's none I have of this. I said so. Right? And then, of course, she's like, well, Get that's out. my birthday. And he goes, I know. We planned it to, uh, just for that very reason. So then, now he's lying to his mom. And he never really proposed until we had been married for 18 years. And I was 40 years old at my 40th birthday. Then he proposed to me. But... Grit your bickering. We're getting married. Right? So we did get married, and we did. And, it, and it's turned out to be great because uh, God has used him in a lot of different ways. And God knew who I needed, and this is who I needed. Um, and he's not perfect, and neither am I. So there are times we do not like each other. Sometimes um, she thinks I am a talking ass. <laughs> yes. A yammering one. Yes. Yes. There are times, but that's not what we're here for. No. We are talking about the fact that God knew from the time we were born, really, that we would be together and that he, you know, he put us together. An atheist and a Christian he put together. And in just a short amount of time that it took for me to actually, you know, get back into living the way I was supposed to as a Christian... And, well, still working on that probably in some areas. But, you know, everybody's a work in progress. 
And then, you know, for him to go from being an atheist to being a yeah. Christian. Well, and the nice part is for his mom, his mom got to see him get saved and be in church. And we would go out there and we would take her to church and we would go, especially at Easter and sometimes at Christmas or Mother's Day and try to going take her. Long before that. She didn't so have we were the to only with. people to ever get her reconnected so, with church. Well, we bought her Bibles and all kinds oh, yeah, of stuff. And so it was really, really. Uh, a nice, um, kind of a nice testimony to your mom. Right. And so uh, I feel like because she was definitely, she always stood up to the family. I'm a Christian. And she didn't really care what anybody else thought. And she didn't care if she was going to church because. Now, the rest of my family a is a, they're not even, they don't, they're not even classified your as niece an atheist. Is a Christian. Yes. But the rest of my family, my immediate family is like, right. whatever. You know, right. good vibes, bad vibes, Your dad's an atheist, things like that. But so everybody else is just not. Just more not of a. Anything. It's a non thing. It's yeah. not. It's not like they. They're like Christian, atheist, whatever. None of that. I just go through life. Right. I deal with things, and if there's vibes and crystals and things, okay, maybe that does something. Yeah. But there was never really any serious thought about it. So this was a group that. Well, your you sister would, likes to. You would let's actually just consider throw it into the universe and see what yeah. the universe gives so back. So to me, that kind of um it's almost that kind of irreverence that kind of lack of thought or commitment i think is the farthest away you can get because they don't even care well you know you talk mm -hmm. about atheists being the opposite of a christian nope i think i think that well, no i think an atheist is a faith just like yes. i think atheism is you have to have faith just but like when you're a, a person that has Nothing. no thoughts right. of it no care about it right no drive for it. Right. Um, you know, you're com I'm trying to remember, think of the word I'm trying to think of, but it, I just described that word. But, and it's like that person is more difficult to get because mm -hmm. they have no reason to care or listen to anything you have to say because right. they don't believe it has any impact in their when life. And that's just pray for them. Yes. So, anyway, that's our story. The atheist well, and the Christian. The point being that got I don't together go around telling people this all the time. However, one of the things that I think is one of the more powerful things that I can do besides share our stories to help people overcome our bad decisions and to point out our good decisions. We've got it. We've got both, believe it or not. But anytime I'm faced with somebody who comes to me and I love this, I'll take the challenge every single time and they tell me, you know what, I'm an atheist and I just don't believe in this and you can't convince me. And I'm like, or they'll make up an excuse because of their atheist or agnostic belief. And I'm like, they're like, you would never understand. And I'm like, oh, contraire. Let's sit down and talk. I can bring you across the bridge faster than anybody else because I know how to speak to you. I know exactly what you're thinking. I know exactly where you're coming from. And I know how to get you across. Um, that is the best part of the negative that I had in my life for all those years wasn't wasted. Right. It's a very valuable but testimonial because, part yes, of my that's what I was gonna deliverance say. for somebody is mm -hmm. I can actually come across that bridge where you are and get you and bring you all the way over. I'm not afraid of going over there. I know where it was. It holds no power over me whatsoever at all anymore. Uh, but I can cut through the bull that these people try to put out there and I can return them with, with answers and thoughts and questions and comments that they don't have replies to because mm -hmm. I've already answered them. Right. So it very, it's really neat watching their light come on, watching their red light go off We've been on for a and while. Uh, their, their light of listening coming on. So now all of a sudden their eyes are starting to watch for the faith and that's what you're going. Right. Well, and usually when people hear that he was an atheist, I mean, we've been married 30 years. We are talking a long time ago. After the gasp. But that's, yes. And sometimes they hear it and they forget it. And there was a guy at church. One of the reasons why I decided to do this was last Sunday or the Sunday before last, we were at church and we were talking and we were actually talking about Christmas and family coming home and, you know, and his mom came up and she passed in April. So this Christmas is a little hard. Thanksgiving was not that hard because it wasn't a big holiday with us with her but Christmas is so yeah. we've already had a few times that it's been a little bit rough and I'm talking to these people this husband and wife at church about it and I said well you know something about Todd being an atheist when I met him 
and and everybody's always like, really? You know, like it's such a shock. And I'm thinking, why is it such a shock? Because that's what God does. That's the business God's in. It doesn't right. matter where you are I mean, in life. He is comes being to an get atheist you. any worse than being an alcoholic right. or right. You know, well, name your sin? But it doesn't, or nothing. You just grew right. up in church and you still needed to find your own relationship right. with God because you can't get there with your parents. You have to do your own. Right. So it, we've been now on for a long time. How many years ago time. has that been? Since of I, what? Since I You've was saved. You've been saved 30, 30 years right. now. Just wanted to. Right. Throw it out there. So thirty years because no I'm still, we met. We I'm met. Still, labored this past Labor Day. We met thirty years. Ago. Thirty years ago, mm-hmm. and then you moved in like in. Two I mean, the story weeks, makes it sound so fresh and new, but this was a long, a time, long time ago. ago. Well, and we've lived a lot of life in between. Correct. You know, and you had to grow, and I had to grow, and that's yep. kind of part of the process. So, um, I think it's going to be your turn to pray this week. Oh yeah. Unless you want me to, no, but this fine. is your topic. <laughs> so, all right, let's do there's, it. There's uh, nothing, I'm just going to say there's nothing that you are going through or have yeah. gone through or anything that you have come from that you have to be ashamed of right. and that you can't share. It doesn't mean you have to share it on a on a public platform and it doesn't mean you have to share every detail. Right. Pick your advisors um, wisely. And, well, I'm just saying your testimony is what's coming out of this. Yes. So, right. Okay. You can go ahead and pray for everybody. Thank you, Father. Uh, Thank you for always being present, no matter where we are in our lives, in our walk with you, from zero to all the way. Uh, We always can count on you being there. Thank you for, well, thank you for being who you are. In fact, one thing I didn't say before was the deliverance moment for me my transcendence of acceptance came from when I finally heard an explanation of God defining who he was being asked. Mm-hmm. And the words, I am. Mm-hmm. If I could put I am on every wall there is in my house, I would. Because it's a constant reminder and an explanation that makes perfect sense to me as to who God is let I am, I am that I am, be in your life mm-hmm. in all that you do, yes. everywhere you go. We, pray for that. we thank you for the salvation that you have for all of us, having sent your yes. son, having yes. giving us a path. Thank yes. you for the book of life, this mm-hmm. book that tells you how to how to how to do life, right. how to find your way through life, how to keep yourself out of heartaches. Thank you for this book. And by the way, this book is called what? The Bible. Yeah, it's the Bible. That's what it is. And we're thanking you for the Bible. We're thanking you for uh, having put every word yes. in that Bible that explains the do's and don'ts yes. and the joys and the steps to the joy that you have offered each and every one of us. Thank you for the grace that you re- yes. that you offer every single day, every second, handing out grace, hand over fist. Father, we thank you for that. We depend on it. And for every day we wake up because of that, we have hope in you that we can overcome all these things. Thank you, Father. Thank you for helping every one of us reach new people. Folks, all it takes is sharing. It doesn't have to be the biggest thing in the world. Just share. Find your testimony that you overcame with and share it with someone else. It changes lives. Yes. Use the things that you were broken in, that you have overcome, and find others that were broken that way and bring them along with you. That's mm-hmm. what we're here for. It's the commission. Mm-hmm. The great commission. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid. Just have a conversation. Let God do the rest. Thank you, Father. Be with us all as we go throughout this week. And in the holiday yes. season, yes. let us all look for those opportunities that are going to present themselves in so many ways. Yes. Thank you, Father. Let us capture those moments for Jesus God, for you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's hey, it. so y'all have a very Merry Christmas. Yes, very Merry. And um, if we don't see each other before then, the New Year, because right? we're not real sure what we're going to do next week. Thank you so <laughs> much. I appreciate that, Lottie. She says, You guys are truly blessed. God's using y'all in a mighty way. What a testimony. Well, Thanks I for believe sharing. so, and I hope so. We and hope I so. Hope it does That's touch our goal. And reach people. Y'all on here, share and like our page, share and like our videos because we do want to grow and um, we, you know, want to 
just continue. We want to be used to help others. That's right. what we want. That's all we want. And it can't do that unless it gets out there. So yep. we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.